Hi everybody and welcome to episode 12 of Between the Sheets with Pamela. Um, excuse me looking like this but um, the husband dragged me off to gym. I'm very pleased he did because, uh, no and I'm not just saying that, um, because we went to the new Virgin Active at Rosebank Towers which is absolutely stunning. So yeah, if you're a, a member of Virgin, go and check it out. A really fantastic gym. And what was great was I bumped into Twitter friend Sinzeni. So divine to meet you in real life. She actually couldn't believe that I, I had spotted her. Um, now, I had no idea what I was going to talk about this week. There's so much turmoil in our own country and in the world in general that I, I felt I ought to say something about that and, and then I thought no I actually don't want to talk about that what I want to speak about is the benefits of a little bit of encouragement and particularly in a writer's life um, and I think what prompted that was that two things happened um, this last week my dear friend Missy Falker signed a contract with an American publisher for her novel a Fractured Land, I think that's the working title, and my friend Sue Inyati got some positive feedback from my own publisher. And I just, I just felt so thrilled for both of them. I was a beta reader on, on Missy's novel and I absolutely loved it. Can't wait to see it in print. And I'm a huge fan of um, Sue's writing. I loved her first novel, The Polygamist. Um, and I love the synopsis of, of this novel. So yeah, fingers crossed. Also, I think having having taught at, at Fitz's drama department for many years and also being the script editor on Movango and a, a mentor to many young writers, I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of encouragement, of giving people hope. Now, I wrote my first novel um, in 1997. It was called... Uh, she male had to think about that it was so long ago i never finished it but i did get some nice encouragement from some um, british literary agents including this one from elizabeth wright from the darley anderson lit agency um, and i'm just going to read it to you really really liked this idea and laughed out loud but here comes the prejudice part we here are still very parochial, and South Africa is for most of us so far removed. If only this was London-based. Anyway, I'm just not sure enough, so I'll give you the opportunity of finding another agent. Lots of luck, a novel idea. Now this was written 13th of the 3rd, 98. 18 years ago, and I've kept it all this time. Um, it's a standard letter. She didn't have to write me a note, but she did. And that little bit of encouragement really kept me going. It made me think, you know what, I, I can actually write. So I think that's why I'm such a big fan of, of trying to give people a, a boost um, whenever you can. And on my long and tortuous route to getting published, I've received so much encouragement from people along the way. I started trying to make a list, but it was literally just too long. I will be mentioning a few of them at my book launch, which is on the 4th of November. Don't forget to RSVP. Do you see what I did there? I just, you know, casually snuck in a little mention of things unseen. Anyway, back to uh, Missy and Sue. Um, they recorded a couple of inserts for me about um, the positive news that they received this week. And I have to say that both of them made me blub. So enjoy. This is the umpteenth take of this video. As my children are sick, they have stomach flu, so the last couple of takes I had some dodgy background noises, so if you'll just bear with me. Um, I'm outside uh, to avoid any background music um, here in my board shed. You can see my beautiful pink sup, as well as my trusty yellow sup. Um, but back to the topic of writing. I'm so stoked to have received a publishing contract from Literary Wanderlust. Um, they're a, a publisher based in, in Denver, in Colorado, and I found them an 
they found me, we found each other through the contest PitMad, a Twitter contest. Um, and I was really stoked because I've tried PitMad a couple of times before and and I didn't get anywhere. So it was really nice to have them ask for my query and then for my um, manuscript and then to send me a contract. So I was really excited and I'm stoked and a little bit nervous because there's always the fear that everyone will hate my book but um, I hope that everyone who reads it will love it. I hope it makes them feel good because it is a feel-good story and I'd love the feel-goods to reach my readers' hearts. Um, I'm very grateful for all the help I got from other writers in the Twitter community and in real life and I'm very grateful that I tried all those contests, pitch mat, pitch wars, sorry, pit mad, pitch wars, nightmare on query street because I learned so much from them about pitching, about querying, about plotting and most importantly about never giving up to keep on keeping on. So. I am really stoked about the journey ahead of me because um, the path in writing is often paved with rejection and it's very hard when your inbox is full of rejection for your heart not to be full of rejection too. Um, so I'm just grateful that I had the encouragement from everyone else to keep on keeping on and I'm really excited about the journey ahead. Good evening everybody and welcome to my bed. My name is Sue and I just wanted to share with you a little bedtime story about how an email from Free Porter gave me so much encouragement about my writing. I was introduced to Free by Pamela a few months ago. She egged me to submit my manuscript to him for consideration you know, and getting a publishing contract. You know, I was a bit reticent because, you know, I'd been working on this manuscript for the past two years and I wasn't sure if it was up to scratch. But anyway, I wrote the synopsis and I emailed it through. Free responded promptly and asked me to send him the full manuscript. And so it went. And he promised he'd get back to me, that they had a whole review process, and I should wait patiently, which I did. As you know, time flies, and it certainly did. And last week, I got an email from Furi, and there was this amazing review from one of the in, from the independent reviewers, and I was like, "Wow! Look, he didn't offer me a publishing contract, but what he gave me was an affirmation that my work is good, and that you know there was a lot of substance." to what I wrote and you know that is such an amazing feeling because I used to wake up at 3 a.m. and write until 6 and then get ready for work every day but because I love to write and writing is my passion it's rewarding when you put your heart and soul into something and when somebody else gets it gets what you all about and what you're writing so I thank for you for the affirmation. Thank you so much. And seeing that we're talking about hope and encouragement this week, I thought I would end off with a quote from the Book of Joy. Now, I've spoken enough about this. It's, it's basically, I suppose, a conversation between His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And this quotation is, is dedicated to everyone who's having a hard time at the moment, um, know that you are in my thoughts. I was quite struck by the Dalai Lama's phrase of passing through difficulties. We often feel that suffering will engulf us or that the suffering will never end. But if we can realize that it too will pass, or as the Buddhists say that it is impermanent, we can survive them more easily and perhaps appreciate what we have to learn from them, find the meaning in them, so that we come out the other side not embittered but ennobled. The depth of our suffering can also result in the height of our joy. Beautiful stuff. 
And now we're going to play out with some music from my beautiful children. They think I'm a ridiculous aging hippie, but they love me anyway. Oh, and some birthday wishes before we go. Happy birthday to my side chick, Sarah McGregor, to my friend Bryn, and to my divine sister-in-law and accountant, Sandy. Oh, last thing, we they say. Oh. Um. Oh.